Once this database is populated with a lot of companies and a lot of employees, the employee pop-up menu right here is going to get quite cumbersome to navigate. What we want to do is make a conditional value list so that we just see the employees for this particular company. In this case, we take off John Osborne and there would just be these three. It's not very difficult to do. We actually already have what we need. We go into Manage Database and look at the relationship graph. Our starting point right now is projects. What we want to see are employees that belong to the company that belongs to the project. So we can simply go across this relationship and modify our pop-up menu. So we're going to go into Layout Menu, or Layout Mode, I should say. Click on here. I could have done it a variety. I could have, in fact, I should just do it this way. I mean, it's faster. It's just sometimes your brain doesn't think the way it should think. And we'll come into Employees. And I'll give it a slight change by company. We really don't need an employee pop-up menu with every single employee. It just doesn't really make sense. We'll specify, and what we're going to do is change this. So there's a start and an end inside, encapsulated inside of this value list definition. So our starting point is here, which is going to be projects. Starting from this project, go through companies, and then do employees, and show me the employees that are via this relationship. So projects to employees, that's our start, that's our end. Let me show you one more time inside of Manage Database. Here's our starting point. Look here, look here. It's going to filter or limit what we see. Click OK. Click OK. Let's try it out and see what happens. Go to Tasks. Pop that up. And look, only the employees for Apple are there. And just to verify that, there's all the employees. Now, what we do see are employees, employees that are invalid or, or, or inactive right now. Now we could add in, side of our managed database, an additional match field that would say, or it would actually be right in here, between companies and employees that had an extra match field, so there'd be two of them there. And it would be a constant. It would be, okay, if there's an active on here, then match it up with here. So I'd make a calculation in companies that says one, and I'd make it relate or add it on to what was already here and connect it to active. That would limit it, but then this relationship couldn't be used for what is being used currently. So I'd actually have to create a new set of table occurrences. Actually, just one. I'd just make another of employees, but there's no reason to because there's other ways to do this. I can also get the same result by going into employees and making a field called name full, last, and I'll put pop-up at the end. Or I should actually, probably better would be active. And I thought I was using this one, but that's fine. We'll just create it as a calculation. It's not very difficult. I was going to duplicate what I had, but no big deal. Text result, name last. Same thing we did before, but the difference is we're going to put a case statement around this to make a decision. So the case statement is going to say active equals 1, then give me the name first and name last. If they're not active, give me blank. And that will prevent it from showing in the pop-up menu, because remember, that pop-up menu is based on the second column. And at the second column, that field for that particular record is blank, even though the relationship sees it, it's, and it's in the, the table for those employees, It'll be blank on that records there. Therefore, what FileMaker decides to do, because it's blank, is not show it at all. There'd be nothing to show. It'd just be a blank value there. So that's what it decides to do. It's a good decision, because now I can do something like this. So now all I have to do is go into my value list. This time I remember to do it the right way. Go into Employees by Company, and specify, instead of name full last, name full last active. And now I should only see one, pot, one person in the pop-up menu. But we see another problem here. See what happened here? Because we based that data from the related record, because we based it on 
that pop-up menu and this feature right here I'll show it to you again this override data formatting with value list well what's happening because of that is that now it's not related so now it's not showing and we don't want that because if we decide to make them inactive it should still show so I'm gonna duplicate this yet again we're gonna have three fields on top of each other I'm gonna go through the relationship all the way over to employees I'm going to choose the employee full first because I can do whatever I want now. I don't have to do last first. I can do full first if I want. It's not allowing entry into it. Should cover all this stuff up. The problem is this field right here is going to show the data that I don't want. So I'm going to copy this conditional formatting that I have on here. So I'm going to put conditional formatting again on this one. This should do it. A little bit of work, but it's not too bad. It's going to give us the result we want. So result of one, text color, I think we used white. Formatting, we use a size of one point. Now it's just a matter of putting these on top of each other. And let's see how well I did. I'm not sure they're all on top of each other, but let me see here. I'm just going to select them like that. Yep, they look like they're on top of each other. Go back to browse mode, go to tasks, aha. But now Steve Jobs is showing up on the last record. Now I wonder why that's happening. That doesn't seem right. They're showing on, in fact, it's not just the last record, they're showing on all records. And this, I'm, I'm glad this happened during this video because this is a thing that people ask about on the forums all the time. Why is the same value showing on? If you see the same value on every single portal record and other ones aren't that way, then what most likely happened is, is that that field's not completely inside the portal. And it's as simple as moving it down and moving it back to where it was, just one pixel, and that should do it. Hopefully, let's see what happens. And it's still not working. Let's see what we got here. Got the name full first. Let's move it over there. Go to browse mode. Still Steve Jobs on every one. So let's see what I did wrong here. There must be something wrong with my theory about what should be showing. So manage database. There's only one employees here. So it should go projects. Ah, here's the problem. I'm going like this. I'm going projects to tasks, back to projects, to companies, to employees. So I actually do need to have another table occurrence here. I can't avoid it. So I'm going to duplicate it, put it so it's in a straight line from projects all the way through tasks to employees. I'm going to call it employees underscore tasks. Very simple naming convention to get me the idea that this is belongs with tasks. So if I'm looking at outside of this context, I can tell. And we'll simply put KF employee to KP employee. Come into layout mode. So that you know reason why I, I decided it might not have been in the, inside the portal was a valid reason. That's probably the first thing you should look at. But that wasn't the reason why. And now what we need to do is just simply change it to employees tasks. And that should solve the problem. There we go. Now it's not anywhere. So we've got a pop-up menu that shows just the right people, but if they're inactive, it'll still allow them to be there. They're just not selectable again from the pop-up menu. So here's two ways to do conditional menus and applied for different reasons. And I like the different reasons we applied them. So remember both methods because think about it and, and set up a little spreadsheet in your head or a, or a, a pros and cons you know, uh, in your head. So what's the pro of this approach? What's the con of this approach and list them all and decide which one works best in this scenario and sooner or later you're going to be really good at this and doing it on the top off the top of your head and making decisions about FileMaker um, because there's not there's never just one way to do something in FileMaker